Hello and welcome to this video on whether we should use fit indices to evaluate model fit in confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually talk about topics related to the M plus software. On Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistics including structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. So in this video, I want to address a rather controversial topic and give you my perspective on it. Many people have strong opinions on the question as to how model fit should be assessed or shouldn't be assessed in confirmatory factor analysis and structural equation modeling and whether we should use fit statistics or fit indices and what kinds of indices and so on. And so here I want to give you my view and I'm curious also to hear about your opinion. So please leave a comment in the comment section if you have your own perspective and want to share it here on this channel. So to tell you the truth right away, my view on um, fit statistics that I have developed over the years in working with many, many different path analytic models, confirmatory factor analytic models, and general structural equation models is that I don't like fit indices very much. And with fit indices, I mean indices that are so-called approximate or closeness of fit indices, also so-called incremental fit indices that look at relative model fit relative to a baseline or independence model. So indices like the RMSEA, the SRMR, the CFI and TLI indices. And there are many other indices as well that you can find in certain programs for structural equation modeling. And so the reason why I'm not a big fan of um, these approximate or closeness of fit indices and also incremental fit indices is that I don't find them to be particularly informative and on the contrary, I actually find them find that they can be very confusing and I also want to say misleading in many instances. I personally am a fan of the chi-square test of model fit. Chi-square test of model fit tests the null hypothesis that the model fit fits exactly in the population and looks at the discrepancy of um, the model implied covariance and mean structure versus the um, observed covariance and mean structure and directly compares them with a chi-square statistic that can then be used for significance testing to reject the hypothesis of exact model fit. And so in my opinion, this addresses the issue, the entire issue of model fit assessment most directly. And I'm a fan of something that is direct, that is clear. And so say where we um, don't have something that obscures or makes issues more complicated than necessary. And so in my opinion, fit statistics, really what they do is they make the whole issue more complicated than it needs to be in an attempt to forgive you, so to say, for a model that um, may not be the best fit oftentimes. What is the whole idea be, be, be behind fit statistics? Why do they exist? Probably the primary reason why fit statistics were developed in addition to the chi-square test of model fit is that people weren't happy with the chi-square test of model fit because it is a very sensitive test, in particular when you have a good sample size, a solid sample size or a large sample size, then this test tends to be very sensitive to misspecifications of models and that is a good thing. We want a statistical test to be sensitive and show us when there is a problem with our model. That's the whole idea, so to say, of structural equation modeling and factor analysis that is that or of model testing in that area is that we want to be able to falsify incorrect models to reject models that do not represent the causal structure appropriately in the worldly structure so to say and um, the chi-square test in general does a good job with that it's very sensitive when you have a decent sample size and you're meeting the assumptions or at least you're approximating 
the assumptions that um, underlie this test, then this will be a test that will give you a clear answer as to whether your model fits or not. Now, that being said, of course, the test is not free of problems and nothing is perfect. And there are a lot of issues with that as well. But relative to the fit indices, in my opinion, the chi-square test gives you a clear answer and shows you clearly when you do have a problem with your model that um, you should look into. The fit indices, on the other hand, have the problem that they actually become less sensitive to misspecifications as the sample size increases. This has been shown by Herbert Marsh in a study that I'm um, uh, referencing in the description below this video where you can look up their paper in which they showed this that actually the fit indices had um, a tendency to become less and less sensitive as the sample size increases and that is completely counterintuitive for statistical testing everything that we do in statistics and in inferential statistics when we test something it is always the case that as the sample size goes up, that our power increases for finding, so say, a discrepancy or difference or something like that. And so that is something that um, is natural, so to say, and that we want. It makes sense to say with a larger sample size, we have more power to detect discrepancies, deviations between our model and the data. And so if that goes away with increasing sample size, then that is just simply strange and for me this is probably the main argument why i don't like fit indices because i find this entirely counterintuitive and confusing that i would say okay i have a large enough sample size now my indices may no longer be sensitive enough to show me that a model doesn't fit i don't like that at all this idea because then i have to think about is my sample size too big should i make my sample size smaller this is something that i cannot um, wrap my mind around, so to say, easily. And I don't see the purpose of doing that when I have a test that will give me a clear answer and that will behave as is expected in terms of the sensitivity increasing with increasing sample size. Also, what I find is that arbitrary thresholds that have been proposed for fit indices are often unhelpful because they don't mean the same thing under different conditions. So under uh, different model sizes, different degrees of freedom, other conditions that may change, those, those thresholds would no longer be valid or comparable across different situations. Now, this is also to some extent true for the chi-square test because also the chi-square test depends on the model size, meaning how many variables you have in your model. When you have a large model, then the chi-square test also may not behave properly. And also the chi-square to some extent or the power of the chi-square depends on the size of correlations of your variables in the model. So that's also the case for that test. But for the fit statistics, there is so say a bigger problem that sometimes those will not look good under certain circumstances. For example, even when your model is okay or they will look good even when the model is not okay. So as an example, for example, incremental fit indices such as the CFI and TLI indices, they depend heavily on the size of the, the correlations in your observed data. When you're analyzing a data set where variables are strongly interrelated, then pretty much any model that you fit to your data will be better than a null model or independence model, which is what these indices compare to your, or where they compare the target model chi-square to an independence model chi-square in those indices. And then your model will look good simply because your correlations are so strong that any model that structures, that proposes a structure for the correlations will be better than the null model. And so then does this tell you much as opposed to a situation where you are analyzing variables that are not so strongly correlated and then it'll be harder to find a model that is much better than the independence or null model. And so this can then lead to results where those indices may not look good for a model that's actually okay or they may look stellar for a model that is actually incorrect and also different fit statistics can disagree so oftentimes we 
find that some of the indi indices are acceptable according to common standards, so to say, or what has been proposed as cutoff values for these indices, and then others don't look good. And so then what would you do in that case? And what do they really tell you? So what does an RMSEA of 0.06 really mean versus 0.04? What is the what is so say the meaning of that? The only index that I find to be um, informative in some ways is the standardized root mean square residual or SRMR index, which gives me the standardized the average standardized residual. So it's the inner correlation matrix. So then I know when it is 0.05, for example, the SRMR. Then I know that the average standardized correlation residual is 0.05, which is not very large. And that's kind of um, useful to know because it shows me that the average, on average, there weren't any large residuals. So those are a bunch of reasons that come to my mind first. So say when I have to explain why I don't like approximate fit indices versus a chi-square test of model fit. And so that's so say, um, why I don't like them, but what would I do? So what would I recommend or what is something that I prefer? I prefer to look at the chi-square test, um, its size um, relative to the degrees of freedom, also the p-value, so whether the model is rejected or not. And then what I prefer to do is look at residuals. So model covariance residuals, mean residuals, if I include a mean structure, and then in particular standardized residuals, either as z-scores or as correlation residuals. These are available in many programs for SEM or probably all of them. For example, in M+, you can get standardized residuals and you can look at them and they tell you then very clearly, oftentimes, which covariances are not well reproduced by your model or which variances or which means. And then that is more helpful information than looking at a fit index, in my opinion. Also, modification indices can be useful in terms of pointing you to areas of misfit or local misfit, so to say, to show you which part of the model is currently maybe underfit, where do you um, where do you maybe miss a path or a parameter, which is not to say that you should simply accept changes that are suggested by the modification indices, but at least they can point you in the direction of where the model doesn't fit or where your structure is underrepresented, so to say, by the model, which effects are not well reproduced by your model. And that is an analysis like that, that focuses on the causes of misfit, the areas of misfit, is much more useful, in my opinion, than saying, oh, my model was okay, uh, RMSEA was 0.05, CFITLI were 0.95, and SRMR was 0.05, uh, and then disregarding potential misfit that would be indicated by the chi-square. So I think it's a good idea to pay close attention to what the chi-square test says and then pay close attention also to your model residuals and potentially the modification indices. Report um, what you find in a paper and that is more helpful than just simply saying, oh, my model wasn't a good approximate fit, especially when you have a large sample where the fit indices may not be sensitive enough. If you want to learn more about this topic, the SEMnet um, listserv is a great resource. Over the years, there have been many discussions on SEMnet about model fit and in the SEMnet archives online, you find a lot of the arguments laid out in a lot more detail and a lot of additional arguments as well for both sides. So there are, of course, people who um, uh, advocate the use of fit indices. And so on that list of you can find um, a lot of information on that as well. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.